Let's move on a bit. I, 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 one, of, one of the the other things that I saw um, recently from you, I think, uh, one of your recent talks, you were talking about contract testing and PACT. Um, and I, I, I really liked your presentation. And, um, and one of the ideas that stuck with me, that resonated, uh, that you mentioned... You mentioned a uh, naive approach uh, and decoupled approaches to, uh, to to thinking about the contracts between different services. Could you just cover a little bit of that, and and in particular maybe touching on? <laughs> I think I think something a view that we both share is that microservices is one of those really good ideas more frequently practiced in the breach than the observance. <laughs> Yes. Um, yeah. So, so I mean, the idea of contract testing again is that it, it's not really about testing. Um, again, yeah. just like TDD isn't really about testing, and BDD isn't about testing. The contracts are about trying to um, specify the um, dependencies between components in a way that is both understandable to the people who need to understand them but it's also enforceable or at least checkable by software so it, so it can be the, the the compliance can be automatically discovered um and one of the challenges is that in the in the microservice um environment ecosystem that we live in at the moment you don't just have component a talking to component b you've got chains of interaction and chains of dependency uh, and the the challenge is you know maybe we're skipping ahead a bit too quickly but the challenge in, in the, the microservice ecosystem is that the promise of microservices is that each microservice should be independently deployable mm -hmm. um, rather than having to uh, naively release uh, multiple uh, microservices in lockstep. Uh, and one of the challenge there is that if you have multi, if you have got a pipeline, uh, as your, your wonderful book, which I see on the shelf behind you talks about, then you'll have, you'll have different versions, potentially have different versions of each component in each environment of the pipelines. And you want to run the, yeah. run the test or ensure compliance as the component and moves its way through um, from doing the unit tests, for instance, all the way through to deployment and uh, and making sure that it works in live. And now we've got a lot of it's not just uh, it's not just one component talking to another. It's not not just one component potentially talking to many other components. It's a version of a component that has to work with many other components that might also be in many other versions. And we've got a cross product going on here. And quite mm -hmm. quickly, it becomes mind bogglingly complicated to try and visualize it for a human. Not so difficult for a machine. Um, and this is where PACT really excels. So um, PACT, uh, which is an, a free open source piece of software, um, ships with uh, a component within it called the PACT broker, which which essentially tracks each version of each component, what its dependencies are on other components, and which environments each <coughs> version has been deployed in. Um, and you only have to run the test between, or run the contract test between component A version 73 and component B version 212 once. And now, you can say that whenever you are about to promote component A into a new environment, you just check, have I run it, have I run a test with this version of this component against the version of the component that it depends on in the environment I'm just about to deploy it to. So you don't have to run the test at the point that you want to do deployment. You just have mm -hmm. to look up uh, in your the broker's matrix, what was the result of that test? And if the test is yeah. passed, then it's, for the, for the purposes of that dependency, it might be safe to promote. Um, and, then, and then you scale it up to multiple dependencies and many, many components. And you get a very, very quick way of being able to ascertain whether it's safe to promote any given version of a component into a specified environment. 
Mm -hmm. and that's a major win. Um, uh, Beth Beth Scurry, who's one of the developers, uh, original developers of Pact, um, has a wonderful saying, which is, um, if if you can't promote a microservice in, independently of other microservices, you don't have um, you don't have microservices. What you've got is a distributed monolith. Yeah, uh, and th there's nothing wrong with a distributed monolith. It's just it doesn't deliver uh, some of the beneficial properties that a microservice architecture uh, promises to people. And so uh, there are many organizations who've jumped head first into microservices, maybe without understanding all of the constraints about them, but certainly without understanding the n the need to be able to treat each microservice as an independent deployable that can be uh, evolved, um, promoted and deployed without having to worry about changing other ones. If you're introducing a breaking change, you want to know that you've introduced a breaking change and then maybe you do have to deploy them at the same time. But as uh, as your book um, uh, lays out in some of the pattern sections, you know, there are ways of keeping backward compatibility and then phase, phasing it out later. So there are, yeah, I'm not sure. Is that, is that what you wanted? Is that the question you wanted me to answer? No, no, answer? no, no that's, that's, that, that's perfect. Thank you. And, 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 and it's perfect on multiple fronts in, in, in that it's really understandable. You've talked about a new project and you're reinforcing my prejudices. So it's ticking all the boxes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I agree entirely. I, I, I often talk about, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a fairly, I'm, I'm, I'm a fairly strong proponent of a distributed monolith in the right circumstances. It has some nicer properties. It makes dependency management a lot easier for some kinds of systems than microservices do. But microservices have some wonderful properties and you need to architect your system to get the gains that you want to get rather than just following a fad. <laughs> well, so I think, um, uh, I think Matt Wynn did a, a a talk it must be a decade ago now called mortgage driven development yeah uh, basically I mean, it was a satire right so nobody yeah. listening should take it seriously but where you try where you practice a particular skill because you know it'll look good on your cv and it'll get you another job yeah later on. yeah yeah I, yeah it's it's at risk of being one of those at times but but i, 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 I and contract testing is certainly you know, an important part of the answer. I think the other thing that we've alluded to throughout our conversation is the idea of more deliberate design, thinking about what those contracts are and, you know, abstracting appropriately to, to, to reduce coupling to a sensible level, a sensible manageable level, and that gives you then opportunities to mitigate the chances of, of, of a change in one part of the system adversely affecting another and your con your contract tests can if they're good can can detect those those the, the, the times when you get that wrong this clip was taken from my podcast the engineering room with dave farley a monthly podcast with some of the brightest minds in software engineering you can find full episodes on all your favorite podcast platforms including spotify apple podcasts and amazon music your support helps us to bring the, you these regular episodes. So please leave your positive review on your preferred podcast platform to help us to continue to grow and bring you great guests and their insights. Thank you very much for listening.